who mean to me. Even if I made a, a great album, I really never thought it would be anything that I'd be included in. I always saw it as something that sort of, I don't, I, my music wouldn't be clever enough to be involved in or something. £20,000, <laughs> that means uh, my mum will give me a pat in the back because she likes, you know, social recognition. Yeah. I mean, I am very, very confident about my hair. I've got my hair done by Errol, Errol Douglas, um, who's just standing over there checking out the hair. I think it's a good eclectic bunch of bands tonight, actually. It's going to be nice. nice show. I think we've, we sold more records the week uh, that we got nominated for the Mercury's than we did when the album first came out. So it just goes to show that it still carries a lot of weight as an award ceremony. The winner of the 2009 Barclay Card Mercury Prize for Lovely Album is... <clears throat> Speech demand! <laughs> Thank you all the Big Dad and the Ninja Tomb star, Peter Quick. Speech, congratulations. Um, I was up on the gallery knowing that you'd won and looking down for you uh, and your reaction was incredible. How did it, how did it feel? It, you it, looked very shocked. I, it, it was surreal. I mean, like, the, the shouts and screams of my people brought me right back to reality fast. <laughs> But um, thank you very much for, for um, picking my album, not just to be nominated, but to win as well. I really liked the fact that you were talking earlier on this evening about um, Miss Dynamite and how she inspired you. Um, you know, tell me about that. How old were you and what did she do to you? Did, what effect did she have on you? I mean, seeing see Miss Dynamite, um, you know, it was, it's so cliche, but she looked like me. She sound like me. She's from the same place I am. Maybe I can do exactly what she's just done. It's as cliche as it is, that's the honest truth. But your record is a record that you know a lot of people have been talking about since it was released, the way it combines different influences, and it's a very different kind of rap album. You know, it kind of sets on this new, new template for rap. We, did you have that in mind when you were making it? And are you pleased that it's wanted for that reason, possibly? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm so glad that when I walked into my label and said, I want to do a hip hop version of Tracy Chapman, they didn't run in the opposite direction. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because in 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 uh, you know just to look at the paper and words, it looks ludicrous. <laughs> in England, and you're a rapper from South London, you want to do what? But I'm so glad that they said, okay, let's give it a try. Well, congratulations! Um, I bet you need a glass of three of champagne now, and uh, I'll join you later in the dance floor. <laughs> All right, I'll see you there. Um, I bought the album after she was nominated, and I think it's really interesting. She's doing something that no one else is doing. Well, I wanted Florence or Bat for Lashes to win, but they're all good, so... Commiserations, obviously, but oh. you seem to absolutely delighted to be nominated. Yeah, there's no commiserations needed, no. It's just magical to be here. Just couldn't have been better. For a jazz group to get this sort of attention is, is amazing. And, and to be part of this, yeah, I mean, it was great. And. You know, hopefully people liked it and hopefully people will hear that and say maybe jazz isn't what I thought it was. What was interesting was that I mean, obviously I work for XFM and I do a show for XFM it's all about new music and new releases and so I listen to an awful lot of releases that come out but there were still things in the boxes that I hadn't been sent or that I hadn't come across and so there were still new discoveries to be made and I think that was the interesting thing about the panel that everybody in a way on the panel discovered some new music and yeah. got really excited and worked up about it and I think that in many ways Speech to Bell is a great example as the winner of somebody who for many of the panel they had no idea who she was you know a year ago and yet she's won the prize this year uh, because she's convinced with the power of her music and I think that many of the judges would echo that. Yeah. Oh, would you agree with that Mike I... especially as somebody who's from a jazz background? Definitely, and for me, you know, it's been a really strong year for jazz. Led Bib were, I mean, okay, a bit out there, but to have them representing that side of the UK jazz scene on such a big platform for that kind of music is fantastic. Um, you know, the Invisible are again a brilliant live band, very uh, intricate band that, um, again, maybe most people might not have heard of them prior to this. So again, it's great they got an opportunity, but Speech to Bell kind of brought that together in a slightly more accessible way, and I think. 
also her narrative and her stories and her passion, you know, really connected with a lot of the judges. So, and it was a very close year. It's a very, it's a horrendous year, really. <laughs> Last year was a lot easier. From my perspective, I, I felt the Elbow album was, was a clear winner, but this year it was very close, and, and obviously everyone's a winner for taking part, right? But Of course, and it is a clear show, but everybody tonight was obviously very touched to be nominated. Yes. You can hear how hoarse I am at the moment. I'm generally quite hoarse, but now I'm about to lose my voice and need some water. But um, we're going to go and enjoy the rest of the night, and uh, congratulations, Speech to Bell.